hi welcome to the channel my name is mary ann in this channel i bring you tutorials on fashion diys from dressmaking bag making and fashion accessories today i'll be showing you a very simple method on how to make this beautiful palazzo pant so without further ado let's get started to make this palazzo pant the first thing you are going to do go ahead and fold your fabric into two according to your measurement fold enough fabric that can take in all your measurements so i've gone ahead to fold mine next thing i'm going to do i'll go ahead and start placing my vertical measurements after folding my fabric into two i also went ahead to mark out my guideline this line is going to be serving as my guideline and my waist point this palazzo pant is going to have a one and a half inch band so i'll be subtracting one and a half inch from all my vertical measurements i'm going to be replacing that with my band later so the first thing after marking out my waist point, the next thing I did was to mark out my hip point. After marking my hip point, the next point I'm going to be marking is my crotch point. My crotch point is at 11 inches. So look at how to measure your crotch point on the diagram. That is how to get your crotch point. So mine is at 11 inches. So I've gone ahead to mark my 11 inches. So from my crotch point, to get my tie measurement, I came down by 4 inches. So after marking at my tie point, the next point I'm going to be marking is my trouser length my trouser length is at 41 inches and i'm going to be adding extra three inches for folding allowance after placing my vertical measurements i'll start placing my horizontal measurements i'm going to start placing my horizontal measurement from my hip point my hip is 40 inches that the circumference of my hip is 40 inches I'm going to be dividing that by 4. 40 inches divided by 4 is 10 inches plus 1 inch. So in allowance, I'm going to be marking 11 inches. I'll be extending this 11 inches to my crouch depth. And I'll be adding 2 and a half for my crouch extension. So this point is for my thigh. My thigh measurement is 23 inches. But because this is a palazzo pant, I'm going to be using 25 inches for that. So 25 inches divided by 2 is 12 and a half. So 12 and a half plus 1 inch sewing allowance, making it 13 and a half. I'm also going to be extending my hip measurement to my waist point. After extending my hip measurement to my waist area, I'll corner to my hip measurement and make I make a curve connecting my crouch extension. The next thing I did was to extend my crouch extension to my tie. So this is my tie measurement plus the sewing allowance. What I have is 13 and a half inches. I'll be marking out a straight line from my tie to my trouser length with 13 and a half inches. That is my tie measurement. So I'm going to be marking 13 and a half inches all the way to my trouser length. After marking this out, I'm going to go back to my waist point and I'll be marking out my waist measurement. So from this point, I'm going to be marking out my waist point. My waist is 32 inches. 32 inches divided by 4 is 8 inches. I'll be marking 1 inch for my dart. I'll be marking one inch for my sewing allowance. So I'm going to be connecting this point to my hip point. So this is basically all for the front part of my trouser. I'll go ahead and cut this out because I'll be using this to cut the back part of my trouser. the front part of my trouser i'll go ahead and fold my fabric again so this time around what i'll be folding is going to be larger 
than what than what I folded the first time to cut out my front pattern. So I'm going to place my front part on my folded fabric again. I'm going to place this. I'm using this front part to cut the back part of my trouser, but I'll be making some alterations in the measurements. After placing my front pattern on my fabric, at my waist point, I'll go up by 2 inches, go above 2 inches my waist point. And at my crotch extension, I'm going to go out by 2 and a half inches. You can make yours 3 inches or 3 and a half inches, depending on how big you are. So from this point, I'm going to be going out by 2 inches. I'll be extending this by 2 inches. I'll be extending this pattern by 2 inches. So from this point, I'm going to be making a slant to meet this point. my front pattern to get the back pattern I'm going to cut this out so I'm still going to make an alteration at the waist area because of this extension I added because the waist is meant to be fitted so I'm still going to alter the measurement at my waist area so after cutting this I'm going to do that how to make the alteration to get my fitted waist after measuring the waist of my front pattern what I have here is 10 inches I'll go to my back pattern and measure my 10 inches I'm going to mark out my 10 inches and I'll be connecting it to my hip point so this is going to be the new waist for my back pattern the next thing I'm going to do I will take this to my sewing machine I'm going to be joining the crotch area of my front and back pattern by half inches so after sewing the front and the back crouch so for the front crouch I did a loose stitch of about seven inches because I'm going to be opening this up for my zipper i'm going to be fixing my zip at the front of my trouser so i did a loose stitch of about seven inches at the front of my trouser i'm going to be fixing my zipper here i also went ahead to hold my dart by four inches so after doing this the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take this back to my sewing machine and i'm going to join the two sides of my palazzo pants. So I've gone ahead to join the side of my trouser with one inch sewing allowance. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the two of these together, the front and the back crotch. I'm going to bring them together making sure the two points meet. So I'll be sewing this by half an inch all the way to the leg of the trouser. After joining the sides of my trouser, I've also joined the inseam. I also went ahead to attach my zip at my center front you can attach your zip at the side of your trouser depending on where you want your zip to be i also prepared my band for my trouser so remember we left one and a half inch for our band so the length of my band is my waist circumference plus four inches so my waist circumference i added extra four inches so i also went ahead to iron light gum stay on one side of my band you can leave yours that is optional I also went ahead to fold one side of my band, that is the side that has the gum stay, by half an inch. So, I'll go ahead and fix my band on my pants. So, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my zipper. I'll start fixing my band from the wrong side of my trouser. So, I'm going to pick my band. I'm going to take this part that doesn't have gum stay. I'm going to shift my band out with about one inch. I'm going to leave one at least one inch 
out i'll take this to my sewing machine i'll be sewing just one side of this to my trouser by half an inch after sewing my band from the wrong side of my trouser i'm going to flip this to the right side of my pants i'll come back to the beginning of my band i'm going to fold this i'm going to take this in by half an inch i'm going to fold this like so I'm going to close this up and I'll be making a top stitch on my band and when I get to the end of my band I'm going to repeat the same thing by folding this sewing and top stitching I've neatly fixed the band on my trouser you can see how neat the band is looking so at this point I'll go and fix my hook to my trouser you can use button if you like. I also went ahead to fold the bottom of my trouser. You can see how neat this is looking. Okay guys, this is all for today's tutorial. Let me know what you think about this tutorial in the comment section. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you've not done so. And please do not forget to give this video a like. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.